All right, top 10 creepypasta stories, not monsters. I don't have a script, so I'm gonna fucking wing it. I did a mixture of stories that you probably have heard of and mixture of stories that are kind of like not quite as popular. So like you guys are exposed to new things. Get this bad boy started. Number 10 is A Perfect Child. Now this is one of the ones that you might not have heard of. I did narrate it earlier. It got surprisingly popular, so I didn't expect it to since it wasn't really a popular creepypasta, but it's about um, this baby that's born and it's perfect. And long story short, people are going nuts over it. People are killing for this supposedly perfect child, and it's just beautiful. It's a very good story with just full-on, like, what-the-fuck moments, but it's the good kind of one of those. Number nine is Mr. Widemouth. Mr. Widemouth is one of the first creepypastas I was exposed to, hence I didn't know what to expect, hence it left a huge impact on me. Surprising enough, when I talked to other people, um, Mr. Widemouth was, like, one of the first ones they listened to as well, so I don't know if it's just, like, a psycho a lot of people find that one first or one of the first ones, but the twist at the end was great. Try not to give it away. It's just, it's a beautiful story in general. Coming at number eight is Russian Sleep Experiment. I have not come across a person that, like, is such a beautiful story. I hasn't liked it. It's, it's great. Um, the quote at the end, it hits deep. Um, it has some legit, some, like, legitimacy to it because it backs it up. Not with facts, but, you know, the setting is right, the proper time, uh, when Russians would actually pull a stunt like this was, you know, displayed. So, there could be truth to it, even though it's obviously fiction. It, reading it, you almost get sucked in and believe it's true. Number seven is Happy Happy. Now, this thing cut to the core with me at first. Like the first, I think it was the first two parts are good. Third one takes a shit turn, but the first two parts are so good it still made it on this list. And the way I have a vague remembrance of it, because it was an actual show on Nick, it just didn't have the disturbing shit on it. Um, but the the mixture of like me slightly remembering it and the mixture of, you know, the whole happened before 9-11, but it, oh, it was great. It was great. It's long, but it's worth it. Number six is, um, Genocide City. This is a Sonic creepypasta, and it has a very interesting look on, uh, video game creepypastas. It's, it's not the same as the others. You know, a lost beta level where it was a Sonic game with two scenarios, and whether you do this certain part differently the game changes drastically and the way the way they did that was great and it was it was a nice little turn it was a nice change from the generic uh, formula for gaming pastas number five is seven minutes seven minutes is a story i did whoa way back back when i like just started narrating actually because i thought it was such a great story and it just provokes such a deep thought that you know, supposedly life flashes before your eyes, so, and a life, it only takes a second for it to flash your eyes, you know, life to, you know, flash before your eyes, and your brain is active seven minutes after you're dead, providing that it wasn't damaged. So, the thing was, is that how many lives you actually live through before you actually die. I just gave away the whole fucking story, it's still great to read, it's thought-provoking, it makes you second-guess yourself. If you don't want to second-guess yourself, then don't read it. Coming in at number four is A Favor for a Favor. This is a recent one that MCP put up, and then it was like an ad for his audiobook, or whatever the fuck, too. Um, but the story itself was really good, I like the persona they gave Satan, made him such a cool guy. It was a twist at the end, it was long, it was well written, there was nothing wrong with it, it was just beautiful. Coming in at number three, I've talked about this story and like a lot of my top ten lists is Pokemon Strangled Red. It's hands down my favorite Poke pasta, and obviously three on my top ten list, so it's very it just set a memory and I know Steven and how he gets so emotionally attached to him so easily is beyond me. It's like Dead Channel, it's like you know, Dead Channel's really poorly written, but you still get attached to the Pikachu. That's multiplied by 10 in this story, because it's actually somewhat written okay. It's got some spelling problems, but besides that, it's fine. And it's just beautiful, and it's long. Coming in at number two is Abandoned by Disney. The series, not just not just the Abandoned by Disney story, like, because there's a series. I was actually in the first part. Um, I think the first story is called Suggestion. That's the prequel to Abandoned by Disney. And I actually played a role in that, uh, in the prequel on Glitch's channel. It was, it's a really good three-parter. Um, and coming in at number one, this is gonna be like a shocker to a lot of people. So, uh, this is a very like under, like a lot of people forgot about it and it just rested in my mind for the longest time and it's called Do Not. And Do Not is a story, I think I heard it first back when Creepypasta Jr. did it on his channel a while back. And it's short, but it's just riveting and the, the way it describes the setting perfect and how you it's almost like you think you're going to die when you read it or listen to it because it, it's one of the stories that throws you in a scenario and it's saying basically you're in this scenario and do not is a, the best example of that and you just shit yourself and you can't help it. 